What's going on you guys? Back again. Today's video unfortunately is draining the loop. Um, and taking the motherboard out because the motherboard decided to die. I know it's only been like two weeks since I just got it done. Um, unfortunately the other day I booted up the PC and I got the dreadful double zero code on the X99 system. So I know some people are going to say, oh I see double zeros all the time. Fortunately, no you don't. You may see it go through all the codes, but if your double zero sticks and you get no BIOS, no regular boot, other than, you know, you'll have the noticeable, you'll get power to the board. You'll get the fans turned on, you'll get LEDs that turn on, but you won't get anything more than that. Because all that's doing is turning on your power supply and everything that's connected to it is getting powered up. If your board... If your system can't even get past the BIOS or doesn't even boot up the BIOS in both uh, settings because most boards have dual BIOS. If you can't get it to post just into the BIOS alone, your motherboard or your CPU is definitely dead. Um, <clears throat> and I've had this happen before. It's not specific to just uh, manufacturers. It's just across the X99 platform. It happens quite often. You could look it up double zero code, no BIOS post, no boot up post. A lot of people keep saying, oh, well, this person, so-and-so got it to work when they did a BIOS flash. That means they got into the BIOS to reflash it. So no, they're not screwed on that aspect. But if you can get into the BIOS, like I said, you're okay. But if you can't even get into the BIOS, you definitely have a bad motherboard or bad CPU. So I'm going to have to turn both of my CPU and motherboard in for uh, an RMA and hopefully uh, get a new one in the next few weeks. But uh, I'm in the process of draining the loop and a lot of people, uh, you know, obviously you see these two spouts. This is quite easy. You know, I open up the, I just take off the two caps or uh, two caps up the top and then I drain the two reservoirs quite easily. Uh, people were wondering how how do you get the rest of the loop done and I'm about to show you guys here uh, <clears throat> so with this in mind I used to have a radiator back there as well but I also have it's a little uh, so it's a what I have here is a T fitting with rotational fittings I don't know if you can see that so whenever I want to drain the bottom loop I just take Take this and rotate it the other way, like so. Just rotates out, and I'm able to hook up a hose and drain the rest of the loop. It's quite easy. I know a lot of it's quite expensive. A lot of people don't have it this way. They just have you know just a valve. Uh, but I like it to keep it clean, and I like to have the accessibility of being able to drain it the way I do. Uh, but just, <laughs> just for prices, I know a lot of people were, are going to ask how much it was. The rotational fittings alone are $10 a piece. So it's almost 20 bucks just for those pieces. Then you got your T fitting and the valve. So in all, you probably I probably have about $50 worth of fittings just, just to be able to do that. So it's not cheap, but I find it very convenient. If you're going to build a loop, you might as well do it right. <clears throat> Uh, but that's really all I have for this update video. I don't have much going on right now other than having to tear it down. I'll put up a, uh, an update video as I get parts in, but, uh, unfortunately the rig is down, but, uh, I'll keep you guys updated and I'll catch you guys in the next video.